hello everybody. As I record this, I'm in my studio and it's the day of release of my first comic book in the Comicsology app. Sean Ward's Super Party goes bananas. So I'm going around the office, I'm doing other things, and I just came across this big box that's got my copy of a lot of the stuff from my career in art and comics, which was long before you, anything happened with YouTube. And I thought, especially now that the new comic book is out, you're gonna wanna see some of this. So let's check this out, okay. Okay, so this is a very, very brief eight page thing where I fancied myself very philosophical. I made this when I should have been working at a telemarketing job. I'd have the phone cradled in my ear and be drawing this. And it was one of the first things I ever finished. It was also one of the first things I tried unsuccessfully to sell in the street. These were on the wall behind me a long time ago, as was Rocket Raccoon. Oh, here's a, an, one of my old business card designs. It's an uncut sheet. You know, I'd cut them by hand and give out square business cards on this fancy photo paper. All right, okay, so now here's me uh, sitting in my bedroom that I was renting, and I finished this. I, I solicited submissions. I was gonna start an underground magazine and most of the comics ended up being mine. I didn't get a whole lot of submissions. But uh, this is the feature story in this anthology book is basically a parody of Pulp Fiction with Bert and Ernie as Jules and Vince. Maybe one day I'll scan that and you can have a look at it. Okay, so this one, my next, my next opus, question mark comics, okay? This one I put a price on the cover, $2. I got my roommates to buy a copy off me. Um, as you can see, Atomic Man, who is one of the characters who's in my cast of characters now, I was using that character even way back when. Uh, he was always conceived to be a parody version of the Adam West 60s Batman if Adam West got hit by a light that fell on set and when he came to, he thought he really was Batman. That's basically the concept for Atomic Man. So now here I am being pissed with myself that uh, even when I finish stuff, okay, I'm proud of myself that I finished stuff, but even with that, I'd finish something and it'd be so long until I go to the next one or um, I got another idea and I just start with the, number, with the new number one. This is one where I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a second one of this. So I finished this comic book, Beat City number one, and it was about this superhero monkey character who gained sentience and fought a big blob monster in the streets and whatnot. Oh, okay, that's number one. So when I did number two, I tried to just dash it off, sketched it, made it up as I went along, pen right to page with no pencil in the middle, and just did it as fast as I can. And the way people flipped through it and looked very like quizzically at me told me I was on the right track. Do I have the number? Oh, okay, okay, here's the number three. So this was number three of that series. Not a whole lot to it. It's another one where I'm just making it up as I go along, trying to be weird. Looking at it now, I will say that this was the first one where I was actually proud of the book design of it. The, 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 the attention to the whole thing as an art object was, I was proud of this one for that. Oh, okay, here's the uh, two Beatles art prints that I did back in the day. I sold these as a fundraiser because I was organizing a Beatles themed art show in San Francisco and I had to get there. So that was how I did that. Number four was the one that had a really detailed drawing of a lollipop on it with the logo in place of the lollipop logo. But I do have, okay, this. This is the, oh my God, okay. It still has the price tag on it, okay? So this price tag is there because this is the first one that I actually sold to strangers and actually tried to make any money from it. This is the one where I've talked about it a bunch of times in interviews and whatnot. This is the one that I had just made. It was brand new. I'm making these comic books and I'm passing them around to people just, you know, around the way. And when I had number five of my series ready to go, and it's the best one, that the, there's actually a coherent story to it, and I'm actually trying to like push a plot forward, um, bringing back that monkey character from the beginning. And uh, so this is the one that I was standing on a street corner waiting for a ride to pull up, and I'm just asking people as they're walking by, hey, you wanna buy a comic book? And there's just that one guy that stopped and said, sure, how much? And off the top of my head, I said $3. He gave me the money, he took it with him, and my mind just started going, okay, so I rent my little room on the third floor of that house. How many of these would I need to sell in a month to make the rent? How many does that come up to per day? Well, geez, if I just stopped having a job and just started devoting my time full time to selling these on the street, I could make that work. And thus began my career as an artist. So this comic book is the first appearance of my character called The Queen. That's her right there. 
and uh, this was the first one that had her in it, and another one where she's been one of my characters who stayed with me all this time. Uh, and there's her in her hot air balloon at the end when she leaves. She's turned the party, she's got the party hot, made the party legendary, and now it's time to go. So out the, the broken window she goes, into the basket of the hot air balloon that's waiting outside, because that's how she gets around. Off into the sky she goes, and goodbye. Now, one thing I'll direct your attention to is just how sweet is this end page right here. The design sense, the mailbag, it's issue five, so the logo repeated five times. Oh, oh, this comic book is kind of where like my life just like, whoo, the turning point that sent me on a whole new direction in life. These were on the wall behind me a long time ago, as was Rocket Raccoon. Okay, so issue number six was part one of a two part story where I introduced a guy who's in a band, but you don't meet the rest of the band yet. And then number seven is the follow up to it. Um, uh, this is one gets a little bit rude. Uh, there's some um, not safe for work content in this one. Anyways, as I was saying, that band guy, there he is. And he uh, came up later on in a few other issues. Number seven was a lot of fun. Okay, so num then number eight was kind of kind of the end of that series, but kind of not. It was in that it was the last numbered Beat City number eight. There was no Beat City number nine, but the story kept going, even though I didn't keep the same title of the series. You understand? So this one's got Atomic Man, and he's on a TV show that's inspired by Soul Train, and uh, a lot of people enjoyed this one. He wins the Disco Cup anyway. So then we get to, okay, now... This is the one that comes after. This should have been Beat City number nine, but again, because I'm a bohemian avant-garde artist, I'm gonna switch it up and do them all as one shots now, okay? So this one is called The Changing Color Takes the Stage. And that uh, guy in the band I talked about in the previous book, that's him right there. He's the bassist in the band, and now you're gonna meet the whole band. Why the focus on this band? Uh, because I was in the middle of kind of this phase where I was obsessed with the Beatles and like 60s culture. And so it was this whole breakdown of like what that period of time and that period's pop culture and that period's music was all about. I was trying to take the philosophy of that and update it for like modern times. You know what I'm saying? So when I would be selling this one on the street, there was a musician busker out there who read it. And he, because of the philosophical aspect, he paid me a really nice compliment when we said, it's Nietzsche in a bottle. The one that came after that was should have been Beat City number 10 uh, but it's, again, I'm just doing them as one-offs, so it's called Mr. Lollipop. Remember how I said I don't have my own copy a lot of this stuff? What I do have is this corrections copy with like my handwritten notes on it to, <laughs> for the corrections that would come later. This cover is too sparse. Color, fill it, think. Uh, but uh, it is extra sized. This is the one where I started getting real deep on like the psychedelic element of it and kind of the mess with your mind element of it and reality looping and flipping in on itself. Starts off as just an urban tale about that band I was just talking about and they're at a concert, but then the henchmen of the bad guy, they take away this guy called Mr. Lollipop. They trap him and he falls into this pit. It's like Alice in Wonderland and boom, he lands in a mine cart. Look at the detail here. I forgot, I haven't looked at these pages in like so many years. So this one was like 28 pages extra sized and the price went up for this one from $3 a copy to five dollars a copy. Now we're going places. I remember the eyebrow raise on the girl at the comic book store where I was taking these to sell them on consignment. She said, okay, so how much is that? I said, five bucks. She stopped and was, five bucks? But that was always my way, right? To like price it a little bit premium to make sure people know this is the real deal. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> okay, so at that point, I had like moved to Montreal because I heard it was this big bad artsy place and then I ended up coming back and I'm trying to think of what my next move is gonna be. So I had this idea, uh, like I said, about my whole philosophical thing going back through like the 60s and all that movement. I had this idea to do a 64 page graphic novel about the Beatles. But before I got into that, I did this thing called Benny Bunny. So notice that the bunny is cut out and glued on there by hand, one by one. This is 48 pages that I just made up as I went along uh, and I had so much fun doing it that I had to make myself stop at 48 pages. It's like, it can only be so long and I gotta get to work on this Beatles thing, but this was just to like flex some creative muscles. So like I said, I was just making this up as I went along. I didn't mean for it to be anything. I didn't mean for it to continue or anything like that. 
but the bunny character stayed with me and he's just such a fun character that he's actually now one of the main characters in the new series. Sean Ward Super Party, read it now on Webtoon for free by the full book length epic Super Party Goes Bananas on Comixology right now. Just type my name into the search bar. One other thing I should mention about that book is that so many people called it the best thing I'd ever done that I reissued it with four different colors. So that was in the purple paper. Now I'm getting the, the, the green, the blue, and the yellow. I don't have a copy of the blue or the yellow. I just got the purple and the green. Oh, fun fact is I actually did a second part to that, a sequel, if you will. Cut the bunny out by hand again. Uh, but this one I actually didn't like as much. This is one where, you know, the story is just made up as it went along again, but I was trying too hard. This is almost like a sequel that isn't as good as the original. And um, I made a few of this one. I never made a second batch. I never really put too much stock in it. So this is a extremely limited collectible. Now, remember what I said about the Beatles book? Well, here it is, sort of. Uh, this is the reissue of it from just a few years ago. Actually, it's a long time ago now. I think 2011 is when I reissued this. But the original uh, Beatles book was had a black cover and even a different title on it. And it was one where I photocopied it, uh, same way I did with those, right? The self-serve copier. But I had a cover printed to make it look prestigious. And so I'd still fold them and bind them by hand but because it had a nice, you know, professionally printed cover on it. It lent it a bit of prestige. This version, this reissue of the book, it was originally called The Beatles Go Too Far. Bonus points for anybody who can tell me what that title was inspired by. But it was originally called The Beatles Go Too Far. The reissue title was Tomorrow Never Knows. And it's uh, literally this the story of the psychedelic Beatles. One fun thing about this book is that I was able to show it to a gentleman named Ron Campbell, who was the supervising animator on the 1968 film Yellow Submarine. And his quote that's on the back here says, if we were going to animate the Beatles today, this is how we'd draw them. Quite a compliment for an old, old school Yellow Submarine fan like me. So let me paint the scene for you. At this point in my career, such as it was, um, I'm coming up on my second winter of doing this selling comic books on the street thing. And I'm feeling down on myself because it's like, winter's hard. Nobody wants to stop and buy comic books off in the winter the way they do when it's a nice day out. I should have learned. I should have set myself up better. What am I even doing with my life? Ah, oh, could not focus to make the next chapter in this big story that I was telling. And the eureka moment came when I said, wait a minute. Why don't I do an autobiographical comic book about what I'm experiencing right now? And that was right Boom, the Sean Ward Electric Comics Freakout number one. What's cool about this one is that a band let me have a release party for it, which amounted to setting up a table by the stage at their like concert at a local venue. But it's pretty cool of them to let me do that. This one really let people know what I'm about and started telling my story and the response to this was so great and I was having so much fun with it and I was so excited about it. But then we get into number two. <laughs> number two of the series and now we're starting to cook. Now we're starting to cook with gas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this one is crazy. This one is uh, this is a higher page count and this one again it's another one that it was about what I've been going through as an artist and you know at this point I'm doing websites for people on the side, I'm trying to do art for people on the side and I'm getting jerked around for money, people that owe me money and can't pay me and stuff like that, it's a lot of that is what this one was about. The one that comes after that was the one, okay now I'm gonna get real weird on people and the next book was the one that I'd probably call my first masterpiece. The Sean Ward Electric Comics Freakout number three is the one where I get kidnapped by aliens and they reveal this whole plot about how they are about to conquer humanity uh, and my comic books are the only force capable of stopping them because they, you know, arouse so much passion in people's hearts and show them the light. So it has to be stopped and that's why they had to kidnap me. But suffice it to say, it all comes down so that at the end of the book, there's me, boom, I made it back right in time to be back on the corner selling them comic books. Fun little thing for you is I was doing some kind of event and I had all my comic books for sale. So number one was for sale, number two was beside it, and number three, which wasn't out yet. So what you could do is you could pick it up, resolve this particular copy, you couldn't open it, it's all glued shut. <laughs> but it was on display like as if it was the next one. It's like, oh, you can't look at it until the release party, right? And that's trying to get people to come to the party. Oh yeah, and then I was doing a lot of this kind of thing too, like promoting my books by making these little preview editions and putting a little bit of graphic design into it. Oh, and you, should, you could tell that at this point, I actually own a computer. Ooh. <laughs> the fourth issue had two stories in it, 
a, the first one was about me and making my comic books, getting into those adventures. But the second part was where I brought that band from the earlier comics back and told a story about them and move their story forward. One of the really cool things about that comic book was that certain artists and graphic design kind of people singled out the cover and told me that the cover was actually a really cool work of art. So that was something I was very proud of. And then if you saw me at, you know, Fan Expo or a Comic Con or something, you might have been handed one of these to promote my next issue, number five. Okay, number five and number six go together. These have been out of print for a long time. I don't know if they're ever gonna see print again because let me share a little story with you. By this point, I'm starting to get a little bit of notoriety. People are starting to know who I am. And I signed a contract with a publisher who's going to start putting my stuff out like a real, quote unquote, real comic book. It's going to be in the stores on nice paper and full color, proper distribution, all that stuff. I'm feeling like a big shot. Like this is my ticket. I got it made. I've made it. Right. But on their advice, they wanted me to do two more issues of the underground comics. And to be perfectly honest, the story that's in these two is literally something I just like made up for the sake of filling up two issues of the comic book while we got stuff ready for them to launch the new series, which never happened. The publisher went defunct. My big comic book never happened. This is around the time when YouTube started taking over my life and kind of part of the reason why I started messing with video and music and putting on events and whatnot is because that's what I was doing to occupy myself while I was waiting for this publisher to like get their act together and publish my stuff. By the time I figured out that they were never gonna, I was already away on this YouTube track, but in the early days of the YouTube channel, I still thought that this channel was gonna be like my calling card in the world of comics. My vision was so limited and I was so like through a variety of things that had gone on in my life, my confidence was so low at that time that I couldn't even conceive that I would turn this channel into a success and actually be able to live off of it. So I thought that my YouTube channel was gonna be a calling card to get my name out there in, in the comics world. But while that's going on, I produced two issues of this thing called, now we're getting into the title I'm still using now, Super Party. Issue number one, issue number two. Here's a little tip for you folks. These were never intended to be issue number one and two of a series, but I had to whip them up because I was doing a Comic-Con appearance. So boom, two issues of a series. <laughs> but this one right here, this is actually the original edition in black and white of the comic book that's out on Comixology right now. Super Party Goes Bananas, the first one-shot spectacular, is this comic book that hasn't been seen since I published it in this folded in half letter-sized paper version back then. But it's back, these characters are back, and the series is on. Number two is actually a parody of Captain America and Thor and the whole Marvel movie thing. And it only ties into the Super Party characters because at the end, on the last page, they're going to the movies and the, what you've read is the movie that they're watching. Oh, okay, so this one actually comes before those ones. Benny Bunny on Wheels is this 48 page, basically based on true events, like, I based this one on my experiences in the comic book world, trying to get published, trying to get local stores to tell, sell my stuff, the whole system of like gatekeepers and asses you gotta kiss and whatnot. Poured all of that into this fun little story that's ostensibly about the comic book world. And this is gonna be something that, a uh, little preview for y'all. This book that's been out of print since I made this edition of it, this is gonna be a separate story on Webtoon as a self-contained, almost like a graphic novel for Webtoon. And then once it's concluded on Webtoon, we'll put it on Comixology as well. So watch for that coming very soon. And then this right here, even though it says the Sean Ward Electric Comics Freakout on it, I had the idea to bring back the title from those comics that I was making. Um, but this is basically, you know, the Queen's in the cover. The cover is based obviously on uh, the Pulp Fiction movie poster. Um, so this is one where like, I'm starting to make a new comic book, but I never got to really finish it because the YouTube thing was just starting to take up more and more and more all of my, of my time and demanding more and more of my attention. So this comic book still sits here half finished. I basically got as far as this kind of cliffhanger part where I had to do a comic book uh, Comic-Con appearance. And I basically took that portion of it and issued it as a 0.1 preview edition. 
only recently I was looking at this and went, oh, geez, I forgot. I've got this half-finished comic book over here. I could, I could finish this and it could be the follow-up to the one that's on Comixology right now. So we've got this big backlog of material that nobody has seen since I sold it by hand one-on-one -on -one to people that we're gonna start reissuing at the same time as we're investing in artists and storytellers to come on and build this world out for us through series on Webtoon and all these other things that we're doing. So this is sort of my cartoon world reignited and people are invited to come step into this world that has been in my brain itching to get out for all these years, you know? Um, going back to being a kid in school even, like all I wanted in life, my whole big dream was to be a comic book artist, you know what I'm saying? And then being a movie maker, uh, now a video maker, was something that came later just as another means of expressing that creativity. But comics was always my first love and it's super excited to be bringing it back. And for any of you out there that are interested, that are checking it out, just know that I appreciate you and you're uh, helping a young artist's dreams come true with that. So with that all said, you can go right now and check out the Super Party series on Webtoon for free. And you can check out the book length psychedelic odyssey one shot story that is Super Party Goes Bananas available right now on Comixology. Just type my name into any of the search engines on those platforms and you'll find it all. And thank you so much for watching and checking all of this out with me. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of my history as a comics and street artist. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.